In this video, we'll explore the basic audio control you can do in the AMP Advanced Media Processing Platform from Grass Valley using a Waveboard. Waveboard Mini in this case, that is a Skaho product. It is this four fader channel audio control or camera control or lighting control panel. It is self-contained, it has a computer inside. We are basically running everything you see in this video straight out of this Ethernet jack, okay? So my laptop is only necessary to record this session and to also use the web UI to set it up. So for this beautiful web interface is basically used to add devices, to set up channels, and we'll do that in this video. So right now it doesn't do much really, it just has the paging set up and we have it like out of the box configured with what is called generic audio control. You see there are a lot of things we can do. We could also add a WaveBot Mini in with a physical, or, you know, larger WaveBot that had, has eight channels or we can even combine it with three wave boards or two wave boards and, and so on. There are different options here. But this generic audio control is what we are going for. Let's just quickly try to set up a channel so we can see something is working. And it works this way. You add inside this, this uh, mapping table the AMP input channels. That would be a good pick. And then the device ID has to match this number you see up there. So that would be one. And then audio channel would be, yes, one. Let's just pick that one. And already something happened on the panel. So you have yet to see the AMP audio mixer and it's right here. So it's a, it, the AMP is an online cloud solution. There are a um, video switcher. We looked at that in a different video. It looks like this. We also have macros that look like this. The platform itself looks like this. And here you have an app store where you can, you can purchase apps. In platform tools, you have a lot of tools that helps you to see what instances you have purchased and if they are running and so on. And there's AMP control, which is a place to discover the, um, protocol and the um, API, how to communicate with it, and there are a lot of things. So if you are watching still, then it's probably because you either want to know about AMP or because you already have it and you know all the things I've spoken about so far. So inside the audio mixer here, we have these audio channels. Not only the 16 channels, we also do have groups. So we have some groups here and we have some outputs. There's a master fader, there's also VCAs, so I can show those instead of groups, they are here. And for every one of these things, you have compressor, you have, this is like compression on the output, you have um, EQ for the outputs, you have the same for uh, also compression and EQ for the groups, and you have it for channels as well. So there you have compression and you also have the um, EQ for the channels, you just have to scroll a little bit, and then you even have noise gate. So the noise gate for the channels will look like this. Let's just do that for a channel that actually exists or we can enable it and then you can see the options. Okay, so we'll get back to that, probably not in this video for real, but I wanna show you the basics, namely that I can do fader control. I can also do muting, nice. I can do soloing and it's sometimes a little bit slow to turn off again. I don't know why, but it's the platform. <laughs> nice excuse, isn't it? And then I can even do gain control here on this knob. You can see the little display here is actually showing the gain change as I'm pressing this button. And you see it here, if I, if I uh, scroll over this button, I can sort of do it in the UI as well. You see the change there. But these are two-way buttons. That's pretty clever, isn't it? So basically pressing the edges of this one, I can adjust the value. Of course, the motorized fader is going to follow along, so I can do it either that way, I can do it this way. This is all happening over the internet. <whistles> Pretty nice. Let's put in more channels. So back to the Blue Pill web GUI. So here we'll just add another four channels for the first page. And now comes a little cool thing. If I pick this one, I can basically press this twice and then I'll have it duplicated, okay? So if I type in one for my device ID, I can, I should be able to do the same. Yes, thank you. And then if I type in two or pick two, as I'm pressing the plus one, I'll have them plus one. And guess what? Now you have these audio faders. I just can't wait to see if this works. Yes, it does. A little bit of a DJ feeling right there. That's pretty nice, isn't it? Yes, and muting, let's just check. Yes, 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 yes. Awesome. 
So um, let's let's move on and put something else on it because we can add more of these rows. And the moment we do that, we see we have more pages popping up. So now we have a second page. So we have some blanks, adding groups. Let's try that one. Duplicate, duplicate, and duplicate. And then we'll still use device number one. That has to be. So what do you think if I had device number two? I could do that also. And OK. Group number one plus one. OK, duck, 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 duck. Yes. And then we go, go over here. We can see the groups already. Let's see if we can do group control. Yes, we can. Can I also use the mute button? Yes, I can. Can I also do the solo button? Yes, I can. See, <laughs> strange thing in this case, the solo is quick. And this one is uh, not being used for anything. And up here, we basically have just the display of the title of the group. Let's go back to the first page. Now we can go between two pages. We have groups, we have channels. And back on the channels, I think the other one is actually the balance. So you see the balance is right there. I can adjust the balance on this now as well. Press and hold to reset. So we can go on and add more channels. And I think you are already seeing the pattern. So let's just try a few things like picking the master here and just setting up the master for the device. Let, let's try some outputs. So I output number one, and we could also pick output number two, like that, and then just add the final one, which would be a VCA on device number one, and let's pick VCA eight. These can also be color coded. So one thing that I did not try yet was to basically pick a color for these. So this is how it's done. And it seems we can also duplicate that. So pressing here twice. No. OK. I'll try again. Maybe we just found a bug. Ah, no. OK. There uh, were was no bug. Three. OK. Ah, too bad. Let's just try once again. No. Come on. <laughs> OK. That was a bug, obviously. Now let's just do it this way. So we pick blue for all the groups. And then finally, for the master, we will pick, uh, it feels like a yellow thing. The outputs would be pink. And also the VCA would be green. All right. So we did that. And now let's check it out on the panel. So here we have master fader. Let's try the master fader. Let's just try it out here. Yes, that works nice. That's good. Let's go um, back to uh, over here. Now we have still the outputs. So we have one output. We have another output. Will it work the other way? Yes, of course it does, as I told you. And we also have muting on these. We have uh, on the VCA. That is one thing we need to find up here. We also have VCA8 muting on and off. Fader control both ways works. OK, so uh, here at the end of the video, um, we could talk a little bit about what kind of extensions we can expect. And by the way, which parameters we can control, because we're just scratching the surface of this one. So if we open here by pressing this, you see the parameter list. And that brings up this web page where you can read through all the things we can do. I'll just scroll through so you can see the massive amount of parameters that we have implemented for AMP. This is amazing. OK, so it's essentially everything that you can possibly do in this platform on the audio mixer and on the mini mixer, which is the live switching application you can find in here. So let's just focus a little bit on what what do we have here? We have the group equalizer. The group equalizer would be what you find if you go to groups and then click the adjust. This is your group equalizer. OK, so looking at this list in the group equalizer, we have high pass enable, high pass frequency, high pass Q factor. All these parameters, we are seeing them right here. OK, and over here, uh, yes, well, they are implemented and we can use those in our application. Uh, just for the sake of completeness, if we scroll down, you see that um, in this point, what is in the columns out here on, on the far side is Minimix of, uh, 4 and 8. And they have their own parameters as well, which is related to the uh, preview and program inputs and also uh, cancel and execute macros. We have key estate. We have um, a few more things. So all those parameters like across the platform are shown in this table for the audio mixer 16, uh, 32 and 64. 
uh, and the Minimix 4 and 8. Yes, okay. But can we use them inside of this one? Yes, we can. I mean, we can go to the configuration tab and here it is possible to some extent to do overrides. In this case, I have just picked for the Waveboard Mini uh, a user section here. And on the user section, it means that we can basically put something we decide on top of these buttons. Maybe I want to create an absolutely blank page to just do some of this and um, um, I'll just call it fun because I think that is what it will be. I'm not sure how useful we will make it. But you see, as I'm now going to this page, apparently I do change forth and back between these two. You also see the changes happening on my waveboard, so it is responding to it. And first thing I want to do is to make this a navigation key. So I'll go to navigation. On the background, we will switch page. So I'll just do that, and it already says background. Let's just press it, and it goes to this page fun. Now, actually, to have this really working, I should go to fun and right click and delete behaviors because that's going to knock a hole in the fun layer so that we see what we just put on the background. See, the background is like something that lies underneath and every other page is like building on top of that. And depending on whether you have transparency enabled or not, it will see through to the background. In this case, I, you, you see everything is blocked out except that, that key. Okay, so we have navigation now. That's the point, navigation. So on this one, let's just click this and then see what we can find in the audio mixer. So for fun, let's go to, uh, we were already on groups. We were looking at adjusting group number one, high pass frequency. Let's try that one out. So we go back here, find groups, equalizer, high pass frequency. It's right there. It's now mapped. It says 150. I wonder what happens if I turn it. Yes. I can adjust the frequency. Whee! Isn't that cool? That is pretty awesome. Okay, so maybe this button, what could that do? That could enable the high pass, was it? High pass, yes, we could enable it on and off. Okay, so now as I press this button, I'm enabling something on and off. Let's see what it is. High pass on and off. I can adjust the frequency. That's pretty awesome. This is fun. This is fun. Okay. What about this guy? Uh, Q factor. Now I am a little bit unsure if, if, um, yeah, uh, you even see we have labels here in the display. That's nice. Okay. This one Q factor. Let's try it and see what happens. It says high right now. And honestly, I'm not really sure because there might be some limitations to what can be done here. Currently, if I go over here, you see this Q factor, it says 1.6 and it says two here, so them, that is a parameter which apparently needs a little bit more tweaking before we can actually change it in the system. It might be better to actually map it to an encoder. That might be the case. We could try to map it to the encoder up here. And then as we turn it, we'll see a change. Okay. I'm not happy with this one. It's not good enough. There's something that we need to look at because it is obviously a decimal number that could have much more precision. We can do other things as well. Let's just open up the um, the compressor, for instance, for this group, or let's do it for channel. So compressor channel number one. Okay, we have it over here. It is set, showing us these settings. So we can go back to the blue pill and then have this encoder help us with compression for a channel. So what channel was it? It was channel one and then we'll choose gain. Gain is minus 21 right now. What does it say up here? Oh, I must have picked something wrong. Channel number one. Ah, it was the gain gain. Okay, now I see. So it was that gain. Okay, we can change that of course, yes. All right, but actually it was compression that I was after. So uh, let's just Kill that and then see channel, compression, compression, gain. Makes sense, yes. I think you're probably seeing the whole point of this. It is uh, quite straightforward what is happening. If I choose tr threshold instead, I'm adjusting the threshold and that is what you see right here. Threshold should be changed on channel number one camera six 
Let's go back and check. Oh, it's output. Sorry. So it has been messed up slightly. We are on channel. Compression threshold. Thank you. Something must have slipped right there, but I am now changing compression threshold for channel number one on the compressor. What about this one, the ratio? Just a quick check. Ratio is this and compression ratio it says 10 right now. Really? Was the output that was the wrong one? Compression ratio. Okay, it says 0.2. Yes. Okay, so that works perfectly as it's supposed to. And I'm adjusting the compression ratio. Now, if I scroll on this one, you see I'm doing it from the software UI, but I can also do it from pen. Okay, guys, I'm sure you understand this. It is quite easy to build multiple pages onto this. You can just continue adding more pages. And this little button, um, page two, this little button down here will actually allow you to go to page two. And right now, page two is not transparent, so I can disable transparency, which will like block out things just like the other one, except that one, which I would now have to delete because it is blocking out my navigation key. Again, my navigation key is coming from the background layer, and that's a smart thing because then I only need to define it once. Otherwise, I need to put it on every page. And I'm sure you know systems where you need to put that navigation on every page, which is super boring. But on Skahoy, we thought about these things and we made it smarter. So this is how you can um, yeah, enjoy our innovations. So And have fun putting your own stuff on these pages. I hope this was inspiring and it got you kind of excited about working with the AMP platform. And you can see how well functioning the control of this online universe, this cloud solution for audio mixing is. We have support for the 16, 32, 64 channel versions of the audio mixer and the uh, mini mixer as well for vision mixing and you can combine it all onto the same panel so that's pretty awesome thanks for watching follow us on social media you can write to me in innovation lab at um, innovation lab at skahoy.com that's the email address and it will reach me if you have any questions i would love to hear from you so please reach out